I basically had a sweatshop in my basement, except I didn't employ children. I, okay, wait, technically, I did employ children. <sighs> Hello, welcome to my channel. You might have clicked on this and been like, okay, this YouTuber sold merch, but I don't know who the f she is. Like, who is this girl? It's because you don't know me yet. Welcome. I recently had a little realization moment and I realized that I want to make content that is more broad focused. For example, I was listening to a podcast for creators. It was with your mom Ashley on the Colin and Samir show. I can link it below if anyone's interested in like the creator world and wants to learn more about this as like I do. But she was talking about how when you make vlogs, no one's going to click on your vlogs if they don't already know you. You know what I mean? So if you want to build an audience, you need to do videos that are more open net and like serve more people. Like for example, the vlog of me and my friends, like yes, I love looking at that. I love watching that. My friends love watching that and I will never stop making those. But I want to add in content that's like beneficial to a wider group of people and I also want to start making content that's more focused on like learning, growth, wellness. I have a huge announcement coming soon focused on that, something that is literally all about wellness, all about growth, maybe more long form content, more talky talky if you know what I mean. And I can't wait. So here's this kind of first style of video. Let me know if you like it. Please send me feedback on Instagram in the comments. But I just want to talk about my merch because I think it's something interesting that I've done. When I tell people that I do it, they're like, wait, what? Like, you release merch? Like, what do you mean? I'm like, no, yeah, I, like, release merch. What do you mean? Like, it's just something that I'm really proud of and that I want to talk about more. So here we go. Let's talk about it. <laughs> so I first released merch all the way back in 2020. It was October of 2020. And I released merch. It was kind of as a joke. I think I kind of hit it under a joke, but I was super passionate about it and I was really excited to do it. I basically had told people, like, merch at 1k like merch at 1k and when i hit 1k i was like i'll do merch like that sounds so fun so the first merch that i released was this little smiley face so i had these sweatpants they look like this and they're literally two years old and i wear them at least like two three times a week so they are like cracking and then they say sammy k on this side and then along with that i sold a black hoodie and it says for the story on this shoulder right here, which is a running theme throughout, you'll see. And then it also has a QR code that if you scan it, it goes to my channel, which I think that's dope. Like that is so cool. And then I did cut it. It doesn't come like this, but I did cut it here. And then along with this, I don't have it with me because I'm in my college dorm right now, but I also released a white version of this sweatshirt. And I sold this from October, 2020 to like maybe November, December 2020. That was the first round of merch that I did. Then for my second round of merch, I released what I'm wearing right now. So I did a black sweatshirt, black t-shirt, and then this blue-green. These are Comfort Colors t-shirts, but it says for, for, for the story on the front, and then the back is a summer bucket list. So it's the Sammy K Summer Passion Project, and then it has kind of this bucket list on here, and then at the bottom it says for, for, for the story. And I love this. Like, I put it on this morning, and I was just like, I forgot how cute it is, and I forgot how much I'm happy with it and how proud I am of this merch design. Like, this shit is so cute. Like, if this was a brand and they put this out, I'd be like all over it. Like, this is just me to a T, and I love it. I have some like re not really regrets because I think regret isn't healthy but I think that the things that I learned from it is what inspired to make this video because I totally would have launched these differently. So now let's dive into what I learned from each of these merch launches and what I would do differently if I were to release another round of merch. I want to start all the way back in October 2020 and kind of take you through the creation process there. So I got in a Cricut and vinyl for my birthday and so I just kind of at that point I was like I'm going to do this all myself. I'm going to print everything on the Cricut. I'm going to order blank hoodies and I'm going to heat press it all myself. Like this is me putting my blood, sweat, and tears into making this merch. So that's what I did. If you don't know what a Cricut is, it's basically kind of like a printer thing that cuts into the exact shapes. I'm explaining this so horribly. Let me give you guys an actual definition. What is a Cricut? This is from their website. It says, Cricut makes smart cutting machines that work with an easy to use app to help you design and personalize almost anything. Custom cards, unique apparel, uh, apparel, apparel, everyday items, and so much more. So I had a Cricut Maker 3, and I ordered white vinyl and black vinyl rolls off Amazon, and then I used the website ShirtChamp 
to order all the blank hoodies. As far as the design goes on the first one, it kind of has like no meaning. I love it so much and I think that the QR code especially is like, like I love that I did that. I think it's so cute and especially I placed it right where if you roll up your sleeves twice, which is what I like to do, the QR code still shows. So I'm like really proud of that design but as far as the smiley face, like it kind of has no meaning. I just thought it was cute. So let's get into how I made them. I ended up ordering a heat press. That was about like $250 off Amazon, I believe. I basically had a sweatshop in my basement, except I didn't employ children. I, okay, wait, technically, I did employ children. I didn't employ them, but I had children working for me because it was all my friends. We were literally sweating, like it was literally a sweatshop. Anyway, since I wasn't paying anyone to make any of this stuff, no one got paid for their time. And I priced these so cheap because in my mind, I was like, this might fail. Like, it's quite possible that no one will buy this. So I wanted to make it as cheap as possible, meaning I think maybe tops, tops, there was $5 of profit on each item of clothing. Like, tops. And we'll talk about this more in a minute, but I ended up giving away a few hoodies too. So in the end, I made zero dollars of profit on these sweatshirts. I think I sold 60 units, but to me, like, it was not about making money. It was just I wanted to get this design out there, and to this day, like, I do not regret that at all. I did take lessons from it. It was more about, like, just having a tangible item and having it out into the world. I would see people in the hall wearing my hoodies, wearing my sweatpants. I'd always be like, I love your outfit. Like, it was just so cute. Again, made literally zero dollars but it was so fun now i want to get into the marketing of this launch because that's what i think i did right i marketed the f out of this drop like i went crazy so first of all i did a teaser video premiere on youtube i had one of my friends who's a photographer megan brand come and do a photo shoot for us i think there was about 20 people maybe it was fun we spent a day shooting and I really liked that and then I did end up giving them a discount on all the stuff so I think I, I sold, I don't think I even told you guys the price that I sold these for yet. I sold these each, hoodie, sweatpants, and white hoodie, they were $25 each. $25. Like where else, you cannot get a hoodie for $25, that shit does not exist. I sold it for $25. So Megan edited, or Megan sent me all the photos, I edited them, which is usually not how that works. I was like, I want to do it, like, please, please. So I edited them, and then I sent it to everyone. And this is what I loved about the photo shoot, was I had so many people that when I sent them the images, a lot of them posted on their own when the merch launched, right? So on the day of the merch launch, I posted a teaser promotion video on YouTube, and then after the promo video, I did a vlog of the photo shoot day of creating the merch, along with an Instagram post just announcing that I was releasing merch, and then, because there were so many people on the photo shoot and I had sent them all of their images, a ton of my friends also posted like, congrats, hey, this is launched. It was either that night or the next day. I took product photos and I posted a giveaway. I gave away a pair of sweatpants, a black hoodie, and a white hoodie. And I thought that I was going to get clowned for that. Like, I thought that I would post that giveaway and no one would share it. I think it was like, subscribe to my channel, share it to your story, and name three friends in the comments, whatever. I thought that no one would do it. As soon as I posted it, holy shit, the, the next day was wild. Like, those 24 hours after I posted it, before the giveaway ended, I, oh, tapping through my stories was a trip. Like, every single person and their mom had reposted this giveaway. It was so cool. It was so cool. That giveaway literally caused everyone in my hometown to know that I released merch and I was doing a giveaway and they saw how much everything costed. Like, that photo gave all the information about the merch. It was perfect. That was like chef's kiss. I loved that giveaway. It created so much business. I loved it. Like I said, I did all of the hoodies and the sweatpants, like, handmade. I also hand-delivered them to everyone's house. So, like, the amount of time that I put into this, it had to have been at least, like, 100 hours. Genuinely, I did not sleep for, like, weeks making all of the orders and then delivering them. It was insane. The biggest lesson that I learned from this first merch drop was pay yourself. I wouldn't change anything in that first launch because, like, I liked that I had the attitude and that I just did it but in the future I learned 
I need to pay myself for my time. I would have loved to pay others for their time, but I just literally didn't build that into the cost of goods. Moving on to merch round two. I love the designs. I love the way they turned out. And this time, with the knowledge from last the last launch, I knew I want to get paid for this. I also knew that I did not want to be creating each piece of merch by myself. Like, I didn't want to be hand pressing it. I didn't want to be cutting everything out. Like, I wanted this to be automated. So I ended up using a shop called Printify, which I highly recommend if you're wanting to get into something like this. Printify is amazing. So basically, it allows you to upload your design, and it's basically like a fulfillment center. So I set up a website. People will place their orders on the website. It goes straight to Printify. They get the order. They create the merch, and they ship it to whoever ordered. I'm almost completely hands-off. So that, you might think, okay, so you could do some awesome marketing, right? I dropped the fucking ball on this. Like, I don't know what it was. I, I just, I think I forgot that marketing was a thing. Like, I just didn't do it, really. I, I should have done a giveaway, right? I should have looked at this past merch and been like, okay, yes, the giveaway works so good. Let's do that again. I didn't do any of that. I think I posted about it, like, one time when we launched, and then maybe I put it in a couple posts after like this merch is so good I should have been hounding it like posting it every piece of content I had so many good ideas with it of things I wanted to do and I just didn't execute like I kind of put the website up I did like a couple posts about it and then I kind of just like let it be there which that the biggest lesson that I learned the second merch drop is that campaigns they need to be fire right I just dropped the ball I did this super cute photo shoot and I had my friend Kate take pictures for me and she did incredible. We had so much fun on the photo shoot and I just like, I posted the photos and kind of like just let it happen. Which Sam, like you're literally an advertising major. You have so much marketing experience. Like what, I just, I think I just forgot. Like I just wasn't thinking. So the second round of merch, I did not get as many orders at all. I think I ended up getting 16 or 17 orders which is such a low number compared to last time. Like that really shows the marketing is everything. Also, another reason that I think that could have happened was because the price point was a lot higher for these merch. So the hoodie was priced at $44 and then the shirts, which are comfort colors, I wanted to do higher quality. I was like, I want this to be comfy, cozy. Like I want it to be high quality. I want it to be nice. The shirts were priced at $34, which is a ton for a t-shirt. Like that's a huge price but I wanted it to be a little bit environmentally friendly. I didn't want to be the one making it, and I also wanted it to be actually good quality. So that's where the price points were at, and then I also sold stickers as well, which looks like this. The second round of merch, I feel like in my head, I had a lot of ideas of campaigns and things that I wanted to post and wanted to advertise with, and I just didn't do it, which I'm really disappointed about because I think it could have been a huge success and it was a success like it was profitable it was great like I'm so grateful for every single person that ordered like thank you so much I can't believe that people have this merch for real because this is like this is my favorite merch I love it the way it just has such good vibes and it's exactly like who I am like if you put me into a t-shirt it is this. it is this like this is me in a t-shirt right I just dropped the ball on the advertising and if you follow me you probably know that I don't know I don't think I featured this shit in my vlogs at all like maybe one or two times I mentioned it like what was going on I just completely forgot so like yes I learned from the first piece of merch that I want to be profitable I want to be hands-off but I just completely didn't learn from the first drop that the advertising the marketing was what did it like it wasn't the hoodie that sold like I think that this design is a lot cuter it's a lot more me it was the marketing that sold it and I just like didn't apply that to the second round of merch <laughs> so those are the biggest lessons that I learned from those two merch drops I have a feeling that I will do another merch drop I don't have anything planned I don't have any designs in the future this isn't like a little like funnel to be like yeah I'm dropping merch soon but who knows I might usually just the inspirational strike and I have a few ideas of things I want to do but nothing nothing that I'm excited enough about that it's like coming soon so overall my first merch launch the biggest lesson that I took away from it was that you need to pay yourself for your time and you need to be able to pay others for their time it's very important it's a very big part of running a business 
the time you put into it is worth money. That's your biggest asset and you should be paid for it. And the second merch launch, I learned how important advertising is and that campaigns are what sells your product ultimately. So if I were to create merch in the future, I would pull these two together and hopefully create something beautiful that I'm super proud of. I don't have any plans to do anything in the near future, but I'm sure I will. Maybe New Year's could be a really fun launch. And I think overall what I learned too is how proud I am of myself for having these ideas in my head and fully executing on them. Overall, you're not going to learn anything from having ideas in your head, right? You can read all the books you want, you can think about all the things you want to think about, but if you're not doing things and if you're not executing on them, you're not going to learn. Ventures are what give you lessons and if you want to start your own business, if you want to be your own boss, if you want to have a side hustle, make your own money, if you're not doing things to get yourself there, then it's not going to happen, right? Those things don't just magically appear. Like you put in the work, you put in the time, you put in the energy, you learn those lessons and you can build better, bigger things in the future. So that's what I want to leave you guys with. If there's something you've been wanting to do, do it, right? Do it. Please, 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 please. You just spent the last 20 minutes watching this video. Go spend another 20 minutes. Get off YouTube and go build something. Brainstorm, right? Do something fun. Ultimately, if you do what you're passionate about, you're going to be happy with your life and you're going to feel fulfilled. And that's the biggest thing that we want for all of us. So thank you so much for watching this video again. If you're new here, my name's Sam, and I'm so happy to have you here. Let me know if there's other videos that you want me to make. Obviously, I love making vlogs and just random shit, but I do want to start doing more, like, almost like business, growth, learning, wellness content. So if you want me to, like, read a book and give you all the lessons that I learned from it or things like that, if you have literally any ideas, comment them below. No shame. Everyone, let's have conversations down there. I'd love to talk to you guys, get to know you all better, and I'm so grateful for you here. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.